good guys, it is Reed and welcome back to a dope video. Today we got an awesome tutorial, a nice little simple card trick, impromptu, anytime, anywhere, any deck of cards that is a great opener. It hits hard, it's killer, it's in your control so you will always nail it and it is easy most importantly. So I absolutely love this trick. It's just a little four of a kind production in a few different phases that I really love, something I, I've been using for a while. I don't really have a name for it but uh, it's just one of those easy tricks that is, is a great little opener if you're doing street magic or that kind of thing. No real credit to give here. It's something I came up with uh, quite a while ago, but uh, I hope you guys like it. This is just a nice little four of a kind opener. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so let me perform this effect for you. So the spectators will shuffle the cards as much as they'd like. And as they're doing this, you ask them to name any four of a kind that they'd like. So for randomness sake, let's say they name the fours. Perfect. So they're shuffling. They got the four fours. Now they hand me the deck back. And I want to show them that the cards are mixed because it's really important for this effect that they know that the cards are in, in no order. And obviously they shuffled so they know that the cards are in no particular order, but it, it makes it more powerful if they can see the mixture, the face up cards that are all shuffled black and red in a completely different order that no one could know. Now what was the card, the four of a kind they said again? The fours, okay, the fours, watch. Just like that, we get the first four. Now that's pretty cool, but let's keep uh, keep working on it here, see what we can do. All right, let's see, a four, a four, a four. Okay, if I cut right here, that should be the second four, perfect. All right, now we got a couple of fours left. You wanted the fours, the fours. Uh, name, name a small number for me. Five, all right, one, two, three, four, and five. We take that and we should get Four, number three, just like that. All right, we have one four left. One four left, let's see here how I can try maybe a cut like this. Let's see, oh, okay, I think I got it, watch. I just run my finger, I should be able to find the exact part of where that four is, and I don't know if you caught that all on camera, but one card shot out of the middle of the deck, and right there we have the final. All right, guys, so that was the effect. I hope you liked it, and let's just jump into the breakdown. It's a great effect, easy, uh, impromptu, and it just kills. It just really kills. It gets progressively more exciting. The audience gets involved, and it's just awesome. And there's a lot of ways you can customize this as well to what you want to do. So I'm going to show you my preferred handling and some of the variations, and you guys choose how you want to perform it. So this, of course, starts with a regular shuffled deck of cards, and it's important now that you emphasize the shuffle. So in a second, we're going to be pointing out that the deck all mixed and shuffled and that's going to be one of our justifications. They're shuffling you say perfect you give that a mix completely randomizing the order of the deck. Now while they're shuffling it's important that you ask them to name a four of a kind and you want to do this right as they start shuffling so that you know the identity of the four of a kind and then there's enough time delay in between then and when you're gonna reveal the first four, right? So you wanna do this as early as possible. So they're shuffling, you say, all right, I want you to name any four of a kind that you want, all right? Just the value. Uh, so let's say they say the twos in this case, all right, the twos. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna execute a call and we're gonna call the four twos to the top. Now, if you're not proficient at the call and you still wanna do this routine, I have a no call variation that I will teach in the other uses and ideas section, so stick around, it's pretty great as well. It uses a very cool little idea. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the deck and we're totally dismissing the fact that they've really named the four of a kind, right? We don't acknowledge it after they have said it. You know, they've shuffled for a while, you take the deck back and you say, all right, these cards are all mixed. Now for this trick, it's very important that you see all the cards are mixed. And now we're just spreading through and we're gonna execute the call of those four cards that they named. So some, you're gonna use some stock lines to just kind of cover this. And essentially the justification of why we're going through the deck is to show them the mixture because it's really important that they see it's mixed. So what I usually say, this is my usual script to get through the whole deck. So you just kind of roughly use these lines, whatever sort of comes to me though. So I say, look, you can see all of these cards are mixed, no particular order, but that's of course in no order, no order that we could have known because you shuffled them. I like to pause, break it up a bit, helps make the call feel more natural and not like I'm really doing anything and like nothing matters. So I haven't seen any twos yet, so I'll keep going. You can see the mix of red cards and black cards. So here's my first two, so I'll go and call that to the bottom. If you need a tutorial on how to call, I have a tutorial there you can go check out. I highly recommend you watch it, especially if you want to perform this. We go through and there's two twos coming up, so I'm gonna say, 
And of course, it's shuffled and no one could have known the order because you shuffled it, so I couldn't have known beforehand. We couldn't know now what the order of these cards are. And I have called those four twos to the top of the deck, right? Take your time with this, right? It's the cull. I am a big proponent of slowing down the cull. So go through, pause, call out the card you need, very slow. You know, you can say, look, you can see they're all different. Each card is totally mixed. Uh, you shuffled, so remember, you remember, you felt these being shuffled, the black cards face up, face down, the red cards, right? You can just say whatever the heck you need to say, but just make sure you talk the whole time you go through, and that'll give the, the justification and not this feeling like, oh, he's trying to do something. So now we wanna take a little moment to sort of put a little time between us having went through the cards and between them having named whatever their four of a kind was and this first reveal. So we'll finish the call, I'll close it up and I'll turn it over and I'll either set it down or just hold it in my hand, usually hold it in my hand. And I'll say, all right, what was the four of a kind you said again? So now I use this little, you know, this little line that makes it seem like I don't even remember, I don't, I forgot. Which one makes it seem like I couldn't have done anything because I don't even remember. And two, it makes it feel like when they said it earlier, it wasn't really important for, for me. Right, so now the magic's starting now. The trick is starting now, right? It hasn't started yet, that's what we're going for. So. I'll say, uh, what, was the, what was the four of a kind you named again? They'll say twos. I'll be like, all right, twos, watch. I'm gonna do this very fair, very open. I'll snap, and I'll say, all right. And there is the first two. Now, if I have a table, I'll drop it to the table. If not, I'll ask them to hold out their hand, and I will place that in their hand. I'll say, all right, let's try this again. Now what we're gonna do is a false cut. Any false cut you'd like, uh, I'll link one that I use and the, the one I love. It's a three packet false cut. So I'll show you the quick overview. The full in-depth tutorial is there, but you cut. Top packet, you do a swing cut, and then you cut again, and as you come underneath, you're re-gripping this top packet with the ring finger and pulling out the middle packet, which is really the bottom, and you're swinging over the packet that was in the index, which is actually the real middle packet, and you're throwing the top packet on top, maintaining the order of the deck. But any, any cut that keeps those cards on top, so you just do that, you say, all right, let's see, now we need the next two. So you're gonna do that, keep those twos on top, and now we're gonna do a really nice dead cutting sequence. It looks like a great dead cut right after a shuffle, so it's really nice. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick up about half the deck, in jog, all right, so you do a little bit in jog or a big in jog, it doesn't matter, they won't see it, and then you shuffle off on top, and you can see that in jog is totally hidden. You just need to hold the deck, literally a regular angle. You can point up a bit if you're worried, and now you have this nice jog right above their card, right? So all you do, is you hold the deck back in mechanics grip, tilt back slightly just so you don't flash the injog, and you say, let's see here. If I come down, and you're just literally gripping and lifting up at the injog, and you say, if I come down, I just cut right about here, right? And from the front, it literally looks like you reach down and dead cut right about here. And I cut those to the bottom, and I say, that should be the next two. And right there, we have two of the twos. Now we're gonna shuffle them to the bottom, okay? So you're gonna pull one, pull two, and shuffle. Make sure you don't flash those twos down there. In the next phase, we're gonna get them involved. So what we do is we do a pinky pull down, okay? So you get a little break. Then you transfer it into an overhand biddle grip with a thumb break. So now we have a break. Just make sure you keep this straight on at them because if you turn too much to the side, you might flash that. So you say, name a small number for me. Usually less than 10 is what I'm aiming for, but you know, if they go over like 15, I'll say, you know, no, no lower than that, lower than that. We don't want this to take too long. Now I just count off the cards from the top that they name. So let's say they say five, one, two, three, four. And now on five, I'm gonna deposit this card as I peel off the fifth card. So I actually have six here now, okay? So at speed, I go one, two, three, four, deposit and pull off that one. And now that card is right there, that two that we need is second from the top, okay? And immediately once I do that, so let's show again, I have my break and I go one, two, three, deposit. So I literally just bring the hand all the way under so this packet is completely square with the deck. I let go slightly, I take all the cards away, you know, beneath the break as I thumb this one over. So now I have six cards and I'll go five, then I immediately take these back to the top and now I just do a double, I'll hit a strike double and flip over their card as the next two. Now to ditch and clean up the double, we're just gonna do a KM move, just like that, and clean up. And we've ditched the card that was on top, and you just place this in their hand. Now this happens at a really nice speed, right? So you come, boom, and you drop it like that. Now how to get your KM move looking good quickly, I'll give you some tips. You don't really need to kill the wrist as much as a lot of people think. You'll often see people go like this, and that's fine, it works, it, it hides that, but if you apply some pressure back here with these fingers, 
that card's gonna just snap against the deck the second you move it out of the way and you won't even be able to see anything like I just did it there and there's nothing to see right I have a double and, it, and it's so quick now if you couple that so what I'm doing is I just put this right in the corner I make a perfect V and then these fingers are just kind of pinching so now when this card moves out of the way this one just snaps right on top of the deck now you can literally do that straight on and they won't see anything now you add the little drag up and flick off the thumb and it completely hides everything you add a small movement to that completely hides everything even more you want to kill the wrist a little bit and, and kind of cover that angle really helps it but just pull this like instead of pulling out and away right because when you pull out and away you have this big snap where the card has to travel all the way from here to here if you pull it up more upwards then look how much closer this card is to the deck rather than being out here and having to snap that far so if you just combine those you get a really clean km move but again there's no heat on you here right you literally you go you do the double you get a reaction and you say and there is the third two now if you've done this sequence correctly the fourth two will be remaining on the bottom of the deck right because we had both twos on the bottom we did this uh sequence fourth twos on the bottom the third two is second from top so I hit a double, hit the KM move, and drop that there. Fourth card's on the bottom, so just make sure you don't flash it. You won't flash it while you're doing this, right? Everything is kind of, there's no reason to turn the deck over as you do that third sequence. You get the third two, but just from this point, make sure you don't bring the hand up. And now, this is where I change it up. Usually in the fourth phase, I change it up. So one of my favorite ways is to use the spread force. Go check out my handling of the spread force and any other moves I talk about in this video, the, the three packet cut is taught on the channel, the cull, the, um, the false riffle shuffle for the dead cut sequence. The only one I didn't really, I haven't really taught is the KM move. So I gave you a few more detailed tips there, but anything you need to learn, uh, go check out. Or if you need a, a question, if you have any questions, just leave those in the comments or you can reach out to me by email. Now we have the two on the bottom. This is where I switch it up. So I often like to use my handling of the spread force, which I said you can go check out. So that would be like this. And I'd say here, look, reach in. You try to find that last two. Just touch any card you want. This one, no, you want this one here? Perfect. And that is the last two. So, I mean, that's so fair because they literally reach in and they touch a card. If they touch this one here, I show them and it's the two. You know, it's awesome because they can touch any card. They can come pull this one here near the top and I just turn it up and it's the two every time. I don't know how it works. No, I'm kidding. You can go check out that video, see how it works. So I use my spread force handling a lot. It's straight from the bottom of the deck and I can literally force any card they touch to be the next two. So I use that a lot because, you know, we want this to be improved on all the other routines so this feels like they helped they made the choice it's such a fair feeling the other force i would use if i want them to really you know decide i'll use a second deal force so while i flip them face up and i'll say you say stop whenever you want and they'll say here i'll say this one and i'll take it away i'll say this is the one you want if they say yes perfect if not i place it back and they want to go a few more i put it back and we just keep going until they actually do say stop and then when they say stop we have the fourth two. So that's another way to get them to feel super involved. Uh, and those are my go-tos. And then I have that pop flip sort of production that I do. Something I kind of figured out playing around one day and it actually is pretty cool. I was actually trying to just be able to flip and catch. There you go, I did it again without trying to. But flip and catch the top packet and the top card kept flying off the deck and I didn't know where it was from. And then I realized it was the top card. So I realized I could use this as a production. If you're gonna hold the cards in mechanics grip, pull your pinky along the side to any point and get about half. And then you're gonna throw the cards up like this and cause the packet to rotate off your thumb. And your a goal is to try to get the flip and fall back on top, right? But now, if you apply a little bit more pressure with the thumb, as you do that, this card's gonna peel off and fall as the rest of this packet turns over. And that's what essentially is gonna cause this card to shoot out just like that. Wow, that was a perfect landing. I'm never gonna get that again in a hundred times. So there you go, I'm gonna end that there. Um, but yeah, so you know, I, you just, if it's on the bottom, I would just do one more false shuffle, retaining that card to the top. Go check out beginner or false shuffle video to know how to do that. Pinky pull down the side. I like to usually point this out. And I said, look, if I just, let me see right about there. Then I'll go throw and peel off the top card with the thumb. It just kind of, you know, you just need to find the right amount of pressure. If it's, if it, the whole packet's flipping and you're just catching it, then you're doing it well. If the packet's separating, then you don't have enough wrist flick to keep the centripetal force to get the cards to flip around and land in your hands. 
Um, so then you just need to have more of a flick as you do this. To get the card to peel off, you just get a little bit more pressure with the thumb so that it kind of stays behind and you'll just notice that it shoots out. So in terms of uses and other ideas, I just wanted to point out like this routine, uh, I love so much for its customizability. You guys can do whatever you want, um, particularly in the fourth phase, you know, I really like a force where they can feel, you know, super fair, super involved, or that really cool one-handed production flip. Um, if you guys would like like a super detailed tutorial on that flip, let me know, or maybe one on the KM move too, because both of those I touched on a bit in this video. But uh, yeah, it's so great because you can customize this routine how you want. Uh, you can totally make it your own too, like from maybe you just like the call aspect, but then the productions you don't like for whatever reason. So then, you know, make your own version of it. Uh, just make sure the phases build on each other and then it works well as an opener. And that's what I love about this effect so much. It's a great, uh, great opener. There's so many ideas with this, so many different productions. You might have a fourth phase you like better, some cool move you can do. Maybe it's a, the top shot or one of the cyclone throws or something like that. And, and all of those would work great. My last thing is gonna be on, if you don't wanna use the cull for this, how to do this in a bit of a different way, that I think is also uh, quite good, quite strong, and it uses a cool little force. So for this, all you're gonna wanna do is have the aces already set up on the top of the deck, okay? So, of course, if you wanna keep the part about the spectator shuffling, which is one of the things that makes this effect so strong, you're gonna need to do a couple of things. One, you can either start with a bit of a setup, and you have those aces um, on the bottom of the deck, or top of the deck I suppose in this case so you have the deck face up with those aces there and you can get a break under them and then you palm them off hand them to be shuffled load them back and you're ready to go right there's that option you can even have the aces already in your pocket your hands are free they shuffle as they're shuffling you uh, you're gonna get them in a palm take them out of your pocket and then you just replace them as they hand you the deck back and you're ready to go or you can also just have them shuffle the aces into the deck right and now, before you've asked them to do a four of a kind, you can just casually go through the deck. Maybe you say, hmm, I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna try to make a prediction here. And now you just cut an ace to the top. You say, okay, maybe this one, maybe this one. Hmm, you have to make a couple predictions. You're hard to read. I'm thinking one of these. And you see now I just replaced, and those are actually just the aces that I just placed all on the deck. So now I have the four aces on top. And then I say, actually, you know what? Let's try something else instead. And then maybe I just give it a false cut and I have those aces ready. So that's another option if you want to just go from a completely impromptu, you know, shuffle. You say, all right, let's see. I'm going to make a couple predictions about you here. Let me see. I'll take the first ace, cut it to the top. And the other three, I'll say, okay, maybe this one. And do this all to yourself. Maybe this one or look at me for a sec. Uh, let's go with that one. And I've just taken the three aces out. And I say, I think it might be one of these. Uh, no. Hmm, I'm not sure, you're tough to read here. All right, let me try, actually let's just try something else here, all right? I just gave that a little false shuffle, false cut, but I have all those four aces on top, ready to go into the effect. So that's another option. Now what you do is you say, all right, I want you to name a four of a kind. Let's imagine we were playing a card game and, and you wanted the best four of a kind you could have. What, what, what one would you name? And they're gonna say the aces. They're gonna say the aces every time. So <laughs> it's actually a really neat little idea that makes it feel like they had a free choice because they do, but they're gonna pick the aces always because of the context. You just say, I want you to name a, a four of a kind, but let's imagine uh, we're playing a card game and, and you wanna win, you want the, the best four of a kind you can, so which one do you want? They're gonna say the aces every time, right? Now you've just forced the aces on them and now you can do this all hands off. You say, watch, ace number one, and then you go into the, uh, the dead cut, boom. Ace number two, shuffle to the bottom, and then we go into the A can, one, let's say they say two this time, I do it again, there's the next ace, and finally, let's say I do the spread force, so they come in, let's say they touch this one, and there is the fourth ace. All right guys, I hope you liked that trick, that video. Um, you know, with these, my tutorials, I usually just try to give you guys really practical stuff that works, that you can go out and perform, stuff that's hard hitting, powerful, you know, there's so many tricks out there that, you know, they're cool tricks, but, to be honest, there's just so many that are very samey, not that exciting. You know, you don't need 10,000 sandwich routines. You don't need 100 uh, triumphs, right? You just need a few really good ones that you can get down and perform and, you know, one of each type of effect that you like and you can go slay over and over with that 
and not have to worry about messing up trying to remember all these different tricks. So I really try to give you guys something that's practical and useful that you guys can really get a lot of value out of. Stuff like this, that's easy anytime, anywhere. You know, these are the stuff that you will really work, the stuff you'll really use. So I hope you like that four of a kind production. It's an effect I always use. It, it really hits hard because it shows your skill. Um, it, there's a bit of magic in there and it, it just feels so impossible from the shuffle deck and them naming any four of a kind. So, you know, welcome all the new subs. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all the support, all the, all the comments. So yeah, with all that said, guys, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.